forecasting isn't always 100% accurate, but researchers are working hard to get as close to perfect as possible. Brian spoke to Dr. Mike Brennan with the National Hurricane Center. Brian, what did he tell you about the work they're doing? Betty, one of the things that researchers are focusing on is rapid intensification when storms strengthen just like that. And to try and do better at that, some of the models that we rely on have been upgraded for this year. We have a center developing. Once a tropical system develops, people spend a lot of time looking at the computer forecast models. So we would expect intensification to occur more rapidly. On TV, we often compare the American model called the GFS to the European and other models. And then there's the cone that's designed to convey the uncertainty that comes with forecasts. Could be a, another tough. But story. how good did they do during the crazy 2020 season? And were the computer models any better? I asked Dr. Mike Brennan from the NHC. Well, I think the NHC forecast was as good or better than all of the model guidance pretty much across the board, save for some of the consensus aids for track. But we really pretty, we were pretty uh, handily beat a lot of the intensity guidance last year, which is pretty impressive in a challenging year that had a lot of rapid intensification. The top winds in hurricanes Hannah, Laura, Delta, Zeta, Ada, and Iota all strengthened at least 35 miles per hour in a 24 hour period. We're able to predict some degree of, of even significant strengthening, but, but if you get the timing wrong, even by six or 12 hours, you can have really large errors, even if you get the overall picture right. Neither the computers nor the humans are good at forecasting these storms that suddenly get a lot stronger. Still, overall, the forecasts are better than they might see. And so anything we do, we base at least five years worth of errors on them. So you try to you know, get a sample across multiple seasons, multiple different types of storms. So we look at, you know, that's how we devise the cone. Dr. Brennan notes the further out they forecast, the bigger the challenge and the more hope that science will come through. But I think there's still plenty of room for improvement out of days three four, five, even out to day six and seven, where we can still get some of those very large errors. Those big errors are just one reason the NHC is thinking long and hard whether they want to make six and seven day forecasts public, among others. Not the least of which the effect on the credibility of the forecasting exactly. process, right? That's a concern. Right. Just this year, Dr. Brennan says four models have or will be upgraded. A big one is the global forecast system, which you may know as the American GFS model. We did see an improvement in the shorter range forecast for weaker systems in the Atlantic, but we're hopeful that, that this improvement with the GFS and then the new HWARF model, HMON, that are going in this, this year will have some improvements as well. The European model did not have a good year last year, but it's recently been upgraded. But until the storms start forming and we can see the models in action, we're really not going to know their tendencies and biases for this year. There is always something new to learn every hurricane season. We want to remind you to get your supplies together early and start going over your hurricane plan. You can always download our hurricane survival guide. It has a checklist and tips to get you and your family ready for the 2021 hurricane season. You can find it if you head to our hurricane section on local10.com. There, we also have the latest information on any storm your weather authority is tracking.